The success of AMD's 9000 series launch is not going to just be based on its actual raw power and its price point. Also availability will be a big thing, uh, but we're also gonna need to see what's going on with FSR 4 because the reality of the situation is Tons of people who have RTX GPUs use DLSS. I know I do, despite having high-end hardware. It's because you often get an incredible performance boost considering the rather minor visual quality hit. And with the improvements offered by DLSS 4 upscaling, the gap between FSR and DLSS 4 has never been wider. It is a massive difference in image quality. And so FSR4 needs to close that gap if they're gonna convince NVIDIA users to jump ship. If you have an RTX GPU and you're used to using DLSS to boost performance, you're gonna be worried about if you're gonna get a, a good upscaler. So for example, uh, to show the difference of how far FSR 3.1 is currently behind DLSS4, not only can you I think everybody would say that the image on the right here looks better. This is from recent hardware unbox testing where they were focusing on DLSS 4 versus DLSS 3, but they did give a, a, a small clip of DLSS 4 versus FSR 3.1, which is the current version. Um, uh, it, it's falling incredibly far behind because not only does DLSS look better, this is balanced mode versus quality mode for FSR. This is DLSS 4 running at a setting more aggressive than the FSR upscaling and the differences are even more stark in motion. So if we let this play for a second, look at how much less stability, like, like, like look at that, you can freeze frame it, play it again, there's so much less stability on the left-hand side of the screen. It is way more blurry, way more artifacting, um, way less detail in motion. The truth is FSR is incredibly far behind DLSS. So that's gonna factor into people's buying decisions. So all eyes are now on FSR4. So what do we know? Uh, one thing we have is we have some image quality comparisons that were available at CES uh, from uh, Digital Foundry as well as Hardware Unboxed, although they were limited to filming a screen with a camera because they couldn't do capture at that time. Uh, we also have a leak coming from Video Cards again, who claims to have access to a bunch of um, uh, media NDA, you know, documents that they're not allowed to release, but Video Cards got a hold of them and is, is able to release them because they never uh, agreed to the embargo. Somebody leaked it to them. Uh, but they have a launch game support list because to be a success, FSR 4 needs to meet a few different criteria. One of them is the image quality needs to at least mostly close the gap with DLSS 4. I don't think it needs to be perfectly as good, but it needs to be extremely usable, which it just currently isn't. The difference is very stark. It needs to be hard to distinguish native rendering from the upscaling, uh, I, I think for a lot of people to wanna use it. And DLSS 4 is currently at that point. It's not necessarily always as good as native, but it's close. So image quality needs to improve, but the thing is a heavier algorithm might actually take a heavier performance cost. We've seen that with DLSS 4 versus DLSS 3. It actually doesn't give you as much of a performance boost as DLSS 3 did because it is a heavier algorithm. How much heavier is FSR 4 gonna be compared to FSR 3? That's another big question. Uh, the other thing is it needs to be supported in a wide number of games because um, that, you know, if it looks good but isn't supported in a lot of games, what does that mean? And that's where this videocards.com leak is giving us some information. They have the official launch game support list for FSR 4. We're going to tell you more about this, but first, let's do a quick story time. Last time I was visiting my sister in Canada, I was reminded again how annoying region locked content is because I couldn't access a bunch of the streaming stuff I was used to in the United States, but it was also cool that I got access to some cool Canadian stuff. But then when I get back to my house, I can't watch that anymore unless you can get these websites to think you're coming from the location where the content is available. You can do this with a VPN. Now I chose NordVPN and a huge thank you for them sponsoring today's video, let me tell you why I went with them. Number one, I love that they have a strict, independently audited, uh, no logs policy. 
This is awesome and shows that they have your privacy in mind, which is one of the main uses and advantages of a VPN service. If you're using this for privacy, you want a no logs policy. Also, I love that their app is extremely quick, easy, simple, easy to use. You get good connection speeds. And also they have a bunch of just cool extras beyond the basic VPN. We're talking dark web monitoring, phishing scam alerts, as well as like fake shop detection. So if you're trying to buy a new, the GPUs, prices are crazy right now. Maybe there's this weird store and you're like, ah, I wanna buy one of those. Well, it might warn you, hey, don't buy here. This is a scam. Highly recommend them. They also stand by with a 30 30 day money back guarantee. Use code Daniel Owen and I can get you an amazing deal plus four months free. Check out the link and again, huge thank you to Nord for sponsoring the video. So let's look at this FSR4 game support list because I think this is absolutely critical. So the headline is 30 plus games at launch. Here's the list, but there's a bit more info than that as well because we should address this. A lot of AMD users are hoping that FSR4 will support older hardware. If you have like a 7900 XDX, you might hope FSR4 is coming to that. However, along with the uh, leaked game list, videocards.com also has a leaked chart showing compatibility. And sure enough, it is FSR4 exclusive to RX 9000 series graphics and above. Uh, only the older versions of FSR are listed as supporting anything else. So this is looking to be exclusive to the new 9000 series GPUs, at least at launch. People did ask AMD representatives at CES if this would eventually come to older series of cards, and they kind of wishy-washy said that they're open to exploring that possibility, but definitely said they were laser focused on 9000 series, at least for launch. The issue is really that if this is a machine learning based upscaler, unlike FSR3, which ne means it needs the proper machine learning hardware support in order for this to run and also give you a performance boost. Because if it runs, if the algorithm runs too slowly, you don't get a performance boost, right? Compared to native rendering, because you gain some frame time by lowering the internal rendering resolution. But if the upscaling process takes as long or longer than what you, uh, uh, than the frame time you gained by lowering the resolution, you don't gain a performance, right? So that's the idea on how upscaling works to gain you performance. Anyway, I honestly have my doubts of it coming to the older hardware, just given the difference in machine learning uh, uh, capabilities uh, between the generations. Maybe more on that in a little bit, because another leak we have from videocards.com today is the final specs for AMD's 9070 XT and 9070. Uh, the official announcement is coming tomorrow as of the time of filming, so maybe by the time you're watching this, this is already out. Uh, but one of the thing uh, to notice here is that the Int8 AI tops throughput is massively beyond what previous generations were able to do from AMD hardware. And we've seen previous leaks looking into FSR4 files suggesting they're running on Int8, which means that FSR4 in its current format probably only will run on this hardware due to this massive increase in Int8 AI tops throughput. So that's what we've got to say about compatibility. But what about game support? So game support, it's nice that it's 30 plus games. You can scroll through the list uh, and we're seeing 35 games. And AMD is confirming 75 plus games will be coming in 2025. However, I have to say I'm slightly disappointed that this list does not include every single FSR 3.1 game. Uh, because at CES, when media were briefed and we were allowed to release to the public, so I do have it and pull up the slide for this video, uh, AMD did release an FSR 4 slide saying that there would be an FSR 3.1 upgrade feature, implying a driver level toggle to enable FSR 4 upscaling for your 9000 series cards in games that have FSR 3.1 support. However, that appears to not mean that every FSR 3.1 game is gonna support FSR 4 at launch, which does seem a bit disappointing. Now there's definitely some important games on this list. For example, Monster Hunter Wilds. If you're curious, will that have FSR 4 support? Looks like it will. Also, uh, as just like a bit of a side note for <laughs> um, uh, Monster Hunter, 
and AMD. Uh, AMD has announced a Ryzen 9000 and RX uh, and Radeon 7000 uh, Monster Hunter Wilds game bundle deal. So you can get the game bundled with some AMD hardware, CPUs and GPUs. Now this was published before uh, the launch of the 9000 series GPUs. So it's possible the 9000 series GPUs could also be eligible for this bundle, but that's not confirmed as of the time of filming. So that's interesting. But anyway, Monster Hunter Wilds will be a uh, launch game support. There's a bunch of other games on this list. But there's some games that are clearly not on this list uh, that do have FSR 3.1 support. For example, AMD does publish a list of FSR supported games, including which version. So for example, uh, while I do see for, uh, Warhammer 40K Space Marines 2 on the launch game support list, if I check FSR 3.1 supported games, FSR 40, uh, sorry, Warhammer 40K Dark Tide uh, does have FSR 3.1 support, but is not showing up on this list. And you could do that with a ton of the games on the FSR 3.1 support list. Now, what's so important about FSR 3.1 support anyway? At, at that point, AMD changed how it implements FSR into games using a DLL, which could then easily be replaced uh, more in line with how DLSS works where uh, people have been swapping DLSS versions in games for a long time because you just swap out the newer DLL from any game that had the newer version or you could download third-party tools like DLSS Swapper and just swap it in. So this is looking like it's not gonna be as simple as any game with FSR 3.1 uh, is officially supported. However, that doesn't necessarily mean you couldn't just drop in the DLL similar to how this works with DLSS. Uh, this is gonna be something that we'll wanna test out uh, once this is out in the wild. But it certainly seems like it's not gonna be as simple as if it has FSR 3.1, it, it, it can be instantly turned into FSR 4 through like a driver level toggle. Anyway, so the, the game support list I'd say looks reasonable, but is certainly not as large of a list as DLSS. Hopefully it grows, uh, especially as, um, like I said, that new DLL implementation seems like an easier way to get this into games. The other major question is again, image quality. And pretty much that's the most important thing. So what do we know about the image quality so far? Well, at CES, AMD was demoing a machi machine learning research project on two side-by-side -side monitors, um, which uh, media could film and take a look at. However, it's not capturing the game directly, it's filming the screens with a camera which of course introduces its own artifacts into the um, exploration of the image quality. Uh, however, Digital Foundry, as well as Hardware Unboxed, uh, were able to get some footage of this. Uh, in Digital Foundry, looking at FSR 3.1 versus the uh, upscaling research project, which we're pretty sure is FSR 4, there are very much some massive improvements. If we play a little bit of the side-by-side -side footage, look at the moiré patterns on the left versus on the right, uh, look at the blurring of particles and how much more stable the particles are here in motion. Look how blurry the motion is on the clapping and how stable it is on the clapping here. So it is really looking like from these early tests that FSR4 may be delivering on the image quality front. At least a massive upgrade compared to FSR3.1. Whether or not that gets as far as DLSS4 does, we'll, we'll have yet to see. But hopefully, it's looking good enough to be very usable and not feel like a major downgrade if you choose Team Red instead of Team Green this time around. Um, so like I said, there's several places where FSR4 needs to deliver. The early screenshots are showing image quality is there. Uh, the game support list is looking okay, although I hope it gets bigger and better quicker. And then, like I said, the performance is the other big thing and I don't think we're gonna get info on that until review embargoes lift. Because again, if you're lowering the rendering resolution, you gain some frame time back, but then you have to have a quick enough upscaling algorithm not to lose it again. So there's still some stuff we need to know, but we learned a lot 
uh, today about uh, FSR4. I really think this is absolutely critical because in my own personal use case, because I have tons of GPUs, I use them in different systems, used, uh, and I try to use both AMD and NVIDIA a lot. The biggest thing I miss on, on the AMD GPUs currently when, when I'm uh, using those systems is DLSS because I usually use it on my high-end NVIDIA systems, even if I don't absolutely need to, just because the performance boost is usually worth it given the image quality uh, uh, still looking quite good. Um, whereas with FSR, I, I've usually avoided using it uh, unless I, I really had tried turning down all the other relevant settings that could gain me some performance quickly. So with DLSS, it's usually my number one go-to for boosting performance if I'm on a high resolution display. The same hasn't been the case for FSR. I hoping, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping we're getting there with FSR 4. I hope all of you have an excellent day.